Death and What Comes Next by Terry Pratchett When Death met the philosopher, the philosopher said rather excitedly, At this point you realize I'm both dead and not dead. There was a sigh from Death. Oh dear, one of those, he thought. This is going to be about quantum again. He hated dealing with philosophers. They always tried to wriggle out of it. You see, said the philosopher, while Death, motionless, watched the sands of his life drain through the hourglass. Everything is made up of both tiny particles, which have the strange property of being in many places at one time. But things made up of tiny particles tend to stay in one place at one time, which does not seem right, according to quantum theory. May I continue? Yes, but not indefinitely, said Death. Everything is transient. He did not take his gaze away from the tumbling sand. Well then, if we agree that there are infinite number of universes, then the problem is solved. If there are an unlimited number of universes, this bed can be in millions of them, all at the same time. Does it move? What? Death nodded at the bed. Can you feel it moving? He said. No, because there are a million versions of me too. And here's the good bit. In some of them, I am not about to pass away. Anything is possible. Death tapped the handle of his scythe as he considered this. And your point is? Well, I'm not exactly dying, correct? You are no longer such a certainty. There was a sigh from Death. Space, he thought. That was the trouble. It was never like this on worlds with everlastingly cloudy skies. But once humans saw all that space, their brains expanded to try and fill it up. No answer, eh? Said the dying philosopher. Feel a bit old-fashioned, do we? This is a conundrum, certainly. Said Death. Once they prayed, he thought. Mind you, he'd never been sure that the prayer worked, either. He thought for a while. And I shall answer in this manner. He added. You love your wife? What? The lady who's been looking after you. You love her? Yes, of course. Can you think of any circumstance where without your personal history changing in any way, you would at this moment pick up a knife and stab her? Said Death. For example? Certainly not. But your theory says that you must. It is easily possible, within the physical laws of the universe, and therefore must happen, and happen many times. Every moment is a billion billion moments. And in those moments, all things that are possible are inevitable. All time, sooner or later, boils down to a moment. But of course, we can make choices between... Are there choices? Everything that can happen must happen. Your theory says that for every universe that formed to accommodate your no, there must be one to accommodate your yes. But you said you would never commit murder. The fabric of the cosmos trembles before your terrible certainty. Your morality becomes a force as strong as gravity. And thought death, space certainly has a lot to answer for. Oh, is that sarcasm? Actually, no. I am impressed and intrigued, said death. The concept you put before me proves the existence of two hitherto mythical places. Somewhere, there was a world where everyone made the right choice. The moral choice. The choice that maximized the happiness of their fellow creatures. Of course, that also means that somewhere else is the smoking remnant of the world where they did not. Oh, come on. I know what you're implying, and I've never believed in any of that heaven and hell nonsense. The room was growing darker. The blue gleam along the edge of the reaper's scythe was becoming more obvious. Astonishing, said Death. Really astonishing. Let me put forward another suggestion. That you are nothing more than a lucky species of ape that is trying to understand the complexities of creation via a language that evolved in order to tell one another where the ripe fruit was. Fighting for breath, the philosopher managed to say, that would be silly. The remark was not intended as derogatory, said Death. Under the circumstances, you have achieved a great deal. We've certainly escaped from outmoded superstitions. Well done, said Death. That's the spirit. I just wanted to check. He leaned forward. Are you aware of the theory that the state of some tiny particles is indeterminate? Until the moment they are observed, a cat in a box is often mentioned. Oh, yes, said the philosopher. Good said Death. He got to his feet as the last of the light died and smiled. I see you. The End Hey Jack! Hey Rob! Funny meeting you here. In the studio, in front of the mic. It's uncanny. It's not a regular occurrence anymore. Ever since Studio H got shut down for, well, things. <laughs> Violations. Health code violations. You know how it is. Ever, ever since that happened, it's not been as regular. 
Speaking of regular, you regularly update your Twitter account. I call it our Twitter account because it's Vinland OTR. And what does that stand for, Rob? Vinland Old Time Radio. That's this little podcast we do. I don't know if you've heard of it. Have not. That's funny because you record it. Oh, I didn't tell you were recording? No, this is just me Uh being me. Anyways, uh, yeah, so if someone would want to uh, follow your your Twitter account. Our Twitter account. How would they do that? At Vinland OTR. Fantastic. And uh, people who don't want to follow our Twitter account, who are on Twitter, you make baby Jesus cry. Live with that. At Vinland OTR. Two N's in Vinland. It's not Vinland, it's Vinland. You can't spell. We don't want you.